Hello, I'm SMB Collector. I don't know about all of you, but I'm in the mood for looking at some Mario stuff today, so let's go through more of this collection I bought. As usual, I suggest you first go watch the videos leading up to this if you haven't yet, including the story behind where this collection came from, as well as the previous unboxings. But now, let's get into it. Ah oh, yeah, you might want to put on some sunglasses so you don't get blinded by this thing's awesomeness. It's a Super Mario Brothers skateboard. So cool. You see Mario and Luigi skateboarding on there? <laughs> this Koopa looks like it's just an utter dread of this whole scenario. And I don't know what this is. It's like some kind of cross between a Goomba and a Super Mushroom. The Piranha Plants are weird looking too. A lot more threatening than usual. I feel like this was a good way to start this video off. I'm all energized now and ready to go through some more Marios. So let's get back to unboxing some more bins. The first item in this bin is a pack of Super Mario Bros. 2 Bow Biters. These are a pair of little plastic Mario and Luigi heads that can clamp their mouths down onto your tied shoelaces as a way to prevent them from becoming untied. Such a weird concept. This one's in pretty rough condition. I already have one that's in notably pristine condition, so it's kind of funny seeing the contrast there. Aw oh man, next is the Super Mario Brothers printed ball, like a beach ball. This is just too awesome. I don't know why, but some collectibles just hit me as being like the coolest thing I've ever seen. And this is one of them. It says here it's made by Sunco, dated 1990. Look at Roy, he's like completely green for whatever reason. And this super leaf just looks more like a real life leaf. And then another item from Sunco, this inflatable tennis set. I cannot express how amazing this is. Just look at it. I don't know. Like I said, some things just really get me, and this is another one of those. Then another inflatable. This one's from Japan for Super Mario World. I think it's another beach ball. So cool! Here's something newer than those other items, but getting kind of old compared to now, from 2004, by Accessory Time. It's a Mario wristwatch. I feel like we've had some real good stuff today. It's been a strong start. Ooh, then we have this toothbrush. Pretty proud of my Mario toothbrush collection, but I actually didn't have this one yet, so this will make a good addition. Or a gel. Dated 2014. Then we have this toothbrush. I know I have similar ones, but I actually don't recognize this one in particular, so it might be new to my collection. It's for new Super Mario Brothers, and it plays music when this button here is pressed. Oh no, this plays for two minutes, what have I done? Oh, you can just click it again to stop it. Here's the back. Dated 2007, from World Trend Incorporated. Then a Mario Spin Brush. I don't know. I don't know why things like Mario toothbrushes can get me so hyped up, but they really do. I think it's just something about, like, consumer goods. The stuff you're expected to use and then throw away. So things like this and food packaging, it's just the kind of stuff I like. Then we also have this Princess Peach Spin Brush. Ah, oh, these next ones are just so cool. Some more Mario toothbrushes. These are by Sensodyne. You can see here that they're from a Dutch-speaking country, possibly the Netherlands. The front shows the image that's on the brush, and so does the side. It says there are four to collect, dated 1992. And here we see the four styles available, including this one we're looking at. I also have this red one. This time it shows Mario running. And then lastly, this blue one shows Mario marching around. I'm missing the fourth and final one, but eh, them's the breaks. Maybe one day it'll cross my path. And then this Luigi toothbrush from a different set. You may recognize this from a post I made on Instagram back in the beginning of 2022, showing a set I bought. Also available are Mario, Peach, and Bowser. Ah, this is just so cool. This bin has all the good stuff. Okay, so first we have this little plastic tray. There's also this cardboard Mario, which can fit in here. 
It's dated 1989. Now you wouldn't want the cardboard in there when you're using it, but you'd fill it up with a bubble solution. Take this Mario-shaped bubble wand, and then all you have to do is dip it in there and you'll be ready to wave it around and make a bunch of bubbles. There's also this bottle of bubble solution to go along with it too. Awesome. Then we have this bag of Super Mario Brothers cookie cutters by Wilton. Now let me tell you a little story about these. I already have a bag like this, but I found them at Goodwill. And Goodwill has this horrendous system I just can't comprehend where when they have expensive stuff, they'll take a marker and write the price on it because they don't want people being able to switch the price tag or anything. But it's like they acknowledge that it's something worth pricing up and yet they write on it, kind of destroying like half of its worth, at least in my eyes. But now I finally have a bag without any writing on it, so that's good. Here's a couple loose ones in the collection. There's Mario and Spiny. I know I've been saying everything is amazing, but here's something you just know I'd love. A Kraft Super Mario Brothers like macaroni and cheese box, or pasta and cheese as they call it on this one. There's also a cutout of just the front of one of those boxes. Ooh, as well as the front of a different Kraft macaroni and cheese box. Actually called macaroni and cheese this time. Not only does the cape feather let Mario fly, it lets him speak French. Then this fully intact box of macaroni and cheese, not just a cutout anymore. At first I was like, oh man, I already have this one in my collection. What a missed opportunity to add a new food package to my collection. But then I realized, this one has power tip number three on the back. I have power tip number four, so this is actually a different box that I did need. This was a similar close call. I was thinking I already had this box, but this is the Canadian version, which I did not have. It's a box of Super Mario Brothers fruit snacks. But they couldn't all be close calls. Here's a Super Mario Brothers chocolate cookies box, which I already have. This one's in really rough condition, whereas my other one is pretty mint. There were three different flavors of these, and I actually made a video about them back in the day, so if you want to get a look at them, you can watch that, but I'm guessing it's all old and cringy, so I don't entirely recommend it. But then again, this video is going to be all old and cringy down the line, so what do I care? Look, it's one of these juice boxes that I got last year, the ones that are still sealed in packs of three. Man, I just adore those things, they're way up on my favorites list. So here's what one looks like post-lunch, but pre-trash can. Yes, and then one of the items I was the most excited for, this Doritos bag with a Mario promotion on it. Ah, yeah. It's amazing that someone actually saved this thing. It's just as amazing that it ended up in my hands. And then here's an equally cool Ruffles bag. It's from the same promotion. Ah, I just love this. It's so majestic. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be this impressed with an old chip bag, but I am. And here's something that goes along with that promotion that you just don't expect to see. It's this little pad that would go on the countertop at the front of a store that was selling the products that were included in this promotion. So this bottom portion is the part that would face the customer, it just advertises the promotion in general. But then this part is what would face the cashier, and it's telling them how to check and validate a winning Nintendo Scratch 3 game card. So I'm guessing these were like in the chip bags and stuff. I just gotta say, this is the kind of thing that's right up my alley, so I'm glad it ended up in my collection. Then a Nintendo Serial System Serial Box. I have one of these Nintendo Serial Boxes already, and though I know there are a bunch of variations with different contests and freebies and stuff being advertised, this one looks suspiciously familiar, so I think it might be the one I have already. This Corn Pop Serial Box, which has a free arcade plays promotion, but the good stuff is on the back. Where there's a picture of the Super Mario Brothers pinball game. A Frosted Flakes box. This one includes an N64 promotion. Some Super Mario 64 stuff here. An Apple Jacks box from the same promotion. You see Bowser just eyeing that cereal. Another Apple Jacks box, but from an earlier promotion. This one advertises a free Nintendo sticker card inside, including one for Super Mario Land 2. And then my favorite of all the cereal boxes I've been showing, this Dunkin' Donuts cereal one. 
Not only do I love Dunkin' Donuts, but I also know for sure that I didn't have this in my collection previously, whereas I'm pretty sure I have most of those other ones. Though I did happen to notice that the Pops one is at least the family size version, while my old one is the standard version, so that was a nice surprise. Free inside, Nintendo Magic Motion Cards, collect all three. There's one for Little Mac, one for Link, and one for Mario who for some reason has goggles on his hat. Next we have a stack of these little packets, I think for sugar, the sort of thing that you'd find in a restaurant or someplace like that. These are definitely made without Nintendo's permission, but I don't think necessarily maliciously. So we have Mario, Raccoon Mario, Luigi, Paper Peach from the Paper Mario games, Toad, Yoshi, who looks kind of strange, his mouth there kind of looks like a Koopa's with that point, Donkey Kong, I think from the Game Boy Advance game DK King of Swing, Paper Bowser, Goomba, this looks like the Popco plush to me, I wonder if they found an image of that and traced it or something, Koopa, Blooper, Paper Lakitu, A terrifying boo. Birdo. PD Piranha. Another Popco plush, I think. And this last one's neat. It shows a bunch of different characters and stuff using line art that I recognize from the 1989 Super Mario Bros. Sticker Fun Activity Book. I made a whole in-depth video about that years ago, which has somehow held up pretty well with me, so I recommend giving it a watch. It's only a little cringy. Here's a Do Not Disturb doorknob hanger with this one saying, Sorry, Nintendo Game in Progress on the front, which could have actually been pretty useful back in the day when games were, for the most part, less forgiving with saves and continues and stuff. Here's the back, dated 1989 by Antioch. This one's unused, so it still has this little spot that would have to be punched out. Then we have this Mario bookmark. It says reach for the stars and shows Mario riding a motorcycle in space, just like in the games. This has the same date and company as that doorknob painter. It's got this tassel. I'm not sure if this is original, but I'm guessing I was just homemade, either as a replacement or maybe the bookmark was sold without one to begin with. Another bookmark it says, I think I'll skip this part. Seems like an odd phrase to have in a bookmark. Like, does it imply you're gonna skip a chapter or something? And hey kid, thanks for writing on your Mario collectible. Ah oh man, look at this, an unopened box of Super Mario Bros. 3 Valentines. I don't know what it is about this bin I picked today, but I picked a good one. A lot of top tier stuff in here. This next one I've been looking for on eBay, so I'm glad I never found one for a good price since I have it now. It's this Mario Paint Easter Egg Decorating Kit. I have such fond memories of playing Mario Paint, so it's nice getting a piece of merch from it. The back shows what's included, including a whole sheet of little Mario stickers to put on the eggs, some glitter paints, some dye tablets, there's also Zelda stuff in here which might be part of why I was having such trouble finding one for a good price since there's that cross appeal for two famous franchises. Up next are two rewards from Club Nintendo. They both have these slip cases, but inside are folding fans. There were four designs in total, but only two of them are Mario. The other two were Animal Crossing, so this is a full set of the Mario ones. These were from 2010. This is the other one. Its design is my favorite of the pair. It has bloopers on it. I remember thinking these were cool back in the day because they were fans, and since I always wanted the Mario ceiling fan, getting one of these could be like a sort of placeholder for it. Here's a sort of single panel brochure for a place called Pleasure Island. It says that you could win a Game Boy tonight at Pleasure Island during Super Mario Nights inside the Super Nintendo Power Dome, a monstrous inflatable dome housing over 30 spectacular video games. Sounds amazing. <laughs> I've never heard of Pleasure Island before, I don't know what that is, but what I do know is that this is the Super Mario Brothers movie font right here. I find that amusing. This one's from 1993, by the way. 
This is a sticker for advertising the Super Mario Brothers bar popsicle treat, like on ice cream trucks or stalls. It had a somewhat lengthy run, but this is when they were going for a Mario Kart 64 theme. Plus another one of those. Next is a stack of Super Mario Bros. 3 paper bags. They're all the same. And then one for the original Super Mario Bros. Then another paper bag, but this one's a Happy Meal bag from the 2006 promotion. Speaking of Happy Meals, here are the boxes from the Super Mario Bros. 3 promotion, all unused. I actually have a set of these in my collection already, but I haven't been able to get to them, and I've been really wanting to because I have a special video I want to make about them. I'm obviously too busy nowadays making all these unboxing videos, along with a million other life things, so I won't be able to anytime soon, but there's a little teaser for you. On some far off day, I'll have a special video about these to upload here. Leave a comment guessing what it will be. But anyways, there were four different boxes total, but here's one duplicate he had in the collection. Continuing with Happy Mail boxes, here's the one for their Mario Kart 8 promotion, which ran in conjunction with these Thai Teeny Beanie Boobs. Here's the Happy Mail box I'm the most excited about because we didn't get it here in North America. Judging by the clues on the box, I think this one is from the UK. One last kids meal box, this time from Burger King's Wii U promotion. I was trying to get all the toys when this was going on, but it was hardly more than a sham. None of the Burger Kings around me got more than a few toys in, and even now I rarely see them turn up. I was swindled, I tells ya. Back to McDonald's, we have one more item from them, and it's this large poster that doubles as a board game. This is from Japan. Here we can see all the toys from the promotion. We didn't get any of these here in the States. Opening it up. On one side, it's hard to get all that in frame, but it's this nice poster. And on the other side is the board game. Then we have this Kids Appeal Play thing. It's kind of like color forms. On the inside, you get these different storyboards inspired by Super Mario Brothers. You got the overworld, you got some underground, you got a castle. Also those classic mushroom platforms. The second board burns underwater to the mix, as well as those giant trees like from World 1-3. And then of course the storage boards that contain the peel-off stickers that you can decorate those storyboards with. A pretty unique looking Bowser there. Same with this one. I don't remember ever seeing a Bowser that looked quite like that. Here's yet another item that I really wanted. It's a Super Mario Bros. Magic Slate Paper Saver. So for those of you unfamiliar with these sorts of things, it comes with this stick of plastic that acts as a writing utensil, and then it just has this single pad here where when you apply pressure using that plastic stick, you can draw whatever you want. The lines are formed as this layer of acetate sticks to the waxy layer beneath it, and thus all you have to do to erase it is lift the acetate. Er, I mean, this slate doesn't work by a scientific phenomena, it works by magic. Here's a book of piano sheet music, but it's probably not what you'd initially guess it'd be. As the title says, this lets you sing and play with Super Mario Brothers. Features 20 all-time favorite kids songs with fun new lyrics about Mario, Luigi, and friends. So looking at the inside here, there's a list of all the songs. It's like, instead of, Old MacDonald had a farm, it's enemies are underground. So they just took all these classic songs and made them Mario songs. That is an SMB collector approved idea. There's also some Zelda stuff in there too, I just noticed. There's also this book of sheet music, but once again it's not music from any Mario games. This time it's traditional Christmas songs. Then we have a page straight out of some kid's sticker collection. It's got a bunch of those old Donkey Kong puffy stickers. Up next, the Super Mario Brothers Counted Cross Stitch Picture Kit. Really like this image. It's almost like the Super Show. It just shows a bunch of Mario characters going on an adventure together. Here's Rex colored green. There's also this eerie colored green. It's like the art director was asking like, hey, what color are these? And they're like, eh, green. Well, what about, eh, they're all green. Okay, now let's go get some lunch. The back shows the available designs. Invincible Mario, 
Super Mario Kart. This one says Yoshi Safari. I kind of doubt they mean THE Yoshi Safari, but still, there wasn't much merchandise for the game Yoshi Safari, so that's kind of cool. 1994. Made by Coates Patents Crafts in the UK. Another cross-stitching item, this time containing just the patterns. It features skateboarding Mario, and also a bunch of ba-bombs and a pow block, as well as a normal bomb. This is how they look. And a somewhat similar item, some iron-on patterns. Mario playing soccer and Mario skateboarding again. Then this huge sheet of decorations came and fit it in frame. I showed this previously in my May 2020 and prior Part 1 Favorites of the Month video, but I was mistaken and thought that they were reusable stickers. On this new one I got though, I was taking a closer look through this hole in the package, and now I'm seeing that it looks more like they're just cardstock punch-outs that you'd have to affix with tape or something. Ideal for windows, walls, and doors. Look at all these awesome designs. Who wouldn't want to decorate their house with these? Now you're organized with power. Here's a Nintendo Power folder featuring both Mario and Link. And another folder, this one with Mario leaping out of a TV as a player uses an NES Advantage controller. These are actually... Whoa! Ooh, bonus Mario! <laughs> um, okay. Uh, detour. Let's see what this is. It's an epic foil balloon. Man, I've never seen this art before. Look at Mario, he's just breaking all the rules, punching a bullet bill. Prana plant with a really long tongue. A Koopa just getting splatted. That's awesome. But anyways, where were we? So I was about to show you the inside of this folder. And then also just a beat up duplicate he had. Then this new Super Mario Bros. Wii folder. I guess I have to look inside of these now to make sure there's no bonus Marios. And then one more folder and the last collectible of the day, this Mario Kart Wii folder. That was a lot of fun today. There was such a variety of things and so many of them were grade A quality. I hope you had fun too, and that you'll stick around for the rest of the videos in this series. There's still plenty more. If you miss seeing me share my newest Mario finds here like I used to, just make sure to visit me on Instagram where I do that and more. But before you go, please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. It was really nice having you here. Thanks for watching.